What government agency began by waging a war against mosquitoes? The CDC. Founded in 1946 as the Communicable Disease Center, the CDC opened in Atlanta instead of Washington, D.C. Why? Because the South had the most malaria transmission in the country. A World War II malaria control agency was the predecessor to the CDC. To warn soldiers about malaria, an imaginative army captain created a pamphlet about a cartoon mosquito called Bloodthirsty Anne. That captain was none other than Dr. Seuss. By 1951, five years after the CDC was created, the U.S. was declared malaria-free. The CDC soon established itself as the go-to organization in the fight against communicable diseases. It helped eradicate smallpox and reported early cases of AIDS. The agency's field epidemiologists became known as disease detectives because the scientists were like investigators hunting for clues. As the mission of the agency expanded, so did its name. The CDC is now officially called Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. What makes the CDC so essential to the health of the planet? The agency does its best to stay ahead of each and every threat, like Ebola. In 1976, the CDC sent its disease detectives to what is now the Democratic Republic of the Congo to investigate a terrifying hemorrhagic fever, later known as Ebola. History's worst Ebola outbreak began in late 2013. More than 11,000 people died, mostly in West Africa. As the epidemic raged, the CDC was on the ground, coordinating with other health organizations and regional partners to stop the virus in its tracks. Today, the CDC finds itself under intense pressure fighting another pandemic. It's a never-ending battle when your job is keeping the world safe from disease. The doctor's bag. It's one of the most iconic objects in the world of medicine. Throughout history, healers have used medical bags in one form or another to carry the basic supplies needed to treat patients wherever they were. So what was in it? Pop open the clasp of a typical 19th century doctor's bag, and you might find it contains tools still used for checkups, like the thermometer and the stethoscope. There might also be some ammonia or smelling salt, and even opium. Later came blood pressure cuffs and hypodermic needles. Armed with a well-worn medical bag, a traveling doctor was ready to bandage a wound or deliver a baby. They were a welcome sight in rural America, especially when the nearest hospital was hundreds of miles away. The classic leather doctor's bag dates back to the Victorian era. These bags were also known as Gladstone bags, so named for the British Prime Minister William Gladstone, who supposedly preferred the lightweight sack to a bulky chest. The black bag became a symbol of care during the 1918 flu pandemic, public health nurses like Lillian Wald made house calls to poor families in New York City tenements. Carrying her bag full of rattling tools, she would climb across rooftops to avoid crowded streets. By the 1970s, house calls were almost extinct. New hospitals were equipped with advanced technology that couldn't fit in a bag. Today, Medical bags harken back to an older approach to healthcare, when patients welcomed the sight of a doctor at their doorstep. They knew good health was in the bag. <laughs>